Do you ever turn on the faucet and wonder, where does the water come from? At Public Opinion, we like to ask simple questions with deceptively complicated answers. And this is one of my favorite questions we've ever asked. Every day, New York City uses a billion gallons of water. The problem is that there isn't a billion gallons of drinkable water anywhere near New York City. In this video, we'll explore the entirety of New York City's water supply system, a project that not only took us months to complete, but also took us on one of the great New York adventures. This is the story of how the city solved the problem of getting a billion gallons of water here today, tomorrow, and every other day, so you and I never have to think about it. They say New York City's bagels are world famous because of the water. That's a lot to do with it. It yeah. starts here. And actually, lucky me, I live up here. My community draws water from the same source. We get great bagels up here too, so don't tell anyone. My name is John Milgram. I'm Director of External Affairs for the New York City Water Supply. We are currently at the Gilboa Dam in Schoharie County, 125 miles north of City Hall. This is the northernmost point of the New York City Water Supply System. So the entire system's gravity fed through protected wilderness, through <laughs> amazing feats of engineering for, that were built over a hundred years ago. This is cool, you want to do where water comes from. This is where it starts. This is the very far end. It doesn't go further than this, and this is insanely far. To move the water through the system, the reservoir is connected to the Shandaken Tunnel, which is 18 miles long. It was built by tunneling through a mountain, and when it opened in 1924, it was the longest tunnel in the world. This is the outlet of that tunnel. It flows into the Esopus Creek. That's what this is, which is the next step in water's trip down to New York City. We met this guy Mark online. He knows a lot about the water system. I think because he's so into fly fishing, he's gonna take us around and teach us about where the water comes from. My name is Mark Lodi, former resident of New York City, drinking this water for a number of years. All these animals, all these birds, all these fish, all these people need fresh, cold, clear, cool water. And that's exactly what New York City has provided here. So the Sopus Creek above here, it's natural, mother nature. This is all human engineered below here. So there's almost like a web that's flowing and getting narrower and narrower and narrower. All these different streams coming in to, together. That's exactly how these watersheds work. Right now it's running clear, gin clear. This water is all feeding into another reservoir. Where is that? That's the Ashokan Reservoir, and it is 16 miles, 16 miles down the river from here. Behind me, we have the Ashokan Reservoir. It holds 122 billion gallons of water. On average, New York City's consuming 1 billion gallons every day, or just under that. At least some people claim that the word Ashokan is from the Iroquois language, meaning place to fish. So there's a bunch of fish in this water. A bunch. Our drinking water. A bunch. <laughs> Yeah. Next time we see you, we're going to be standing in a creek with fishing rods. That's the deal. <laughs> Can I get that in writing? <laughs> the scale of this is insane. 122 billion gallons. Right here. Okay, morning run right behind me. Jackie Kennedy Onassis Reservoir. This used to be an active reservoir, no longer in use. There's a billion gallons of water in this reservoir in Central Park. That's how much water New York City uses every single day. Anyway, back to the run. We're back. We're back. <laughs> We're up at the Shokan Reservoir, about 90 miles from City Hall. It's 12 miles long, widest point about a mile wide, so a little smaller than Manhattan, but similar. It's about 600 feet above sea level. So I think as we've discussed, it's a gravity-fed system. Everything is all watched by elevation. So as long as there's a downward slope, you got water going to the city without any extra energy beside gravity. Okay, so what are some things we should, we should check out while we're here today? Well, I think we should take a look inside the gate chambers. So this is where the start of the Catskill Aqueduct is. Let's go, we should probably put our helmets on, I guess. Helmets, vests. <laughs> You wouldn't drink this water yet. This is yeah. raw water. It's beautiful water, it's pristine. Frankly, it's probably very safe, but it hasn't been treated. It hasn't been disinfected. Uh, it's, it's mountain water. Take a walk. Yeah. Uh, I don't know if it's the shape of my head, but this never stays on right. You're standing directly on top of the intakes for the West Basin of the Ashokan. 
So this is where water's coming in here right now. Right under your feet. Travels down there and enters the aqueduct. We're going under, on underneath the reservoir. We're almost there, right? Serious? So where are we right now? We are fairly deep under the level, the top level of the show can, uh, where the valves are that control the intake that brings the water into the Cascal Aqueduct. And as you can see, there's water wicking through here. That's that water that's pushing through. It's on the opposite side, the water side of the chamber. So these are hopefully pretty sturdy walls here. Hopefully. 100% <laughs> sturdy. <laughs> They've been around for a long time. Yes, sir. Over 120 years. All right. Let's head back up. Pants are soaked. <laughs> All right, where to next? Screen chamber. Screen chamber. Just an example of some of the stuff that gets picked up and screened out. No fish in there. Surprise, that's why you smell that fish. There's like a fishy smell in here. Yeah. Normally you will see remnants of fish in there. It's shaped sort of like an egg. Crests at the top, flat at the bottom. So the water doesn't fill it. There's always a crown, a head space. So there's always air up here. It flows more like a river. So right now this is a fairly low flow. This is about 15 million gallons a day. We can get up to 600 million gallons a day. It would raise the level in here significantly, uh, pretty close to the catwalk. You got everything you need. So the water comes through the aqueduct, which we saw underneath this building, and essentially just travels right under here to the city. It's not a straight line. No, it meanders. It snakes through landscape, right, properties. And... So it looks like a road. I mean, it is a road. But underneath this road, this is the aqueduct. This is the aqueduct. It's 17 feet tall on the inside. Uh, very thick concrete made 115, 120 years ago. Uh, they cut into the landscape. Again, this is the start of a 92 mile meander. We had to go through a gate to get here. Is this whole thing like fenced off in private land, all the whole aqueduct? Well, it's, it's New York City land. We do protect it as well, just for the infrastructure as well as the nature. So John brought us into one of the modern aqueducts, but we also got a chance to see a piece of New York history that brought water to the city in the 1800s. We're in Ossining, Westchester, outside the city, and we're currently inside an aqueduct that was used over 180 years ago to bring water down into the city. This on? Yeah. Okay. I'm Sarah Kelsey. I've been giving tours along the Old Croton Aqueduct for a number of years. The aqueduct goes through so many different places, but the favorite is the weir because people can go down underground, actually inside the water tunnel. So the purpose of a weir is to be able to stop the water that's going down to New York City. What they're trying to do is empty the tunnel south of here so they can jump in and make repairs. This is the guillotine-like structure that they would lower by hand. And when you get down there, you'll see how it covers the face of the tunnel. A lot of people don't like standing where I'm standing. They go, well, Because you feel like Henry. The yes, year. exactly. Well, whoever it was. But, <laughs> yeah. Historically, this tunnel would have led all the way to New York City. Oh, yeah. And filled up, filled up the reservoir in... Yeah, where the, library where the New York is. Public Library is. Yes. There is a gate, so if you were to decide, you know, oh, Sarah, when Sarah's not looking, I'm going to go down there and see what's there, you wouldn't be able to get that far. Within just a few decades, the old Croton Aqueduct wasn't able to keep up with the city's huge demand for water. So plans for a new aqueduct system were drawn up. We're here at the New York Public Library main branch to meet our old friend Ian Fowler. We're going to look at some maps that are going to help contextualize everything we've seen upstate to learn more about how the water system works. We're in the greatest research library in the world, and the greatest city in the world, about to look at the greatest water supply in the world. This used to be a reservoir for the New York City water supply system before it was converted to the current library setting. Which map are we going to start with here? This is the beginning of the new aqueduct system. What's interesting about the history of water supply from this point going forward uh, is this is the first test of the Fifth Amendment. The city of New York gained power from Albany to use eminent domain on private property to create this watershed. These are photos from one of the towns that the city seized. 
The town sat in a valley which was flooded in order to form the reservoirs that we use today. So what we're looking at is basically this maps out the entire Catskill aqueduct. Yeah, and what I find the importance of this map is this shows the number of contractors, siphons, uh, and the little minutia that make the whole thing work. So there were lots of different teams working on these segments. It wasn't built like in one line, it was built in segments. So remember, we talked about that tunnel. This is the river we drove along. We're driving 16 miles now down to the Ashokan Reservoir. Feeding into the Ashokan. Ashokan Res. Which is feeding into the Catskill Aqueduct. So it looks like a road. I mean, it is a road. Which goes all the way down into Kensico. Well, this is Kensico Reservoir. It's just north of White Plains. That's 30 billion gallons here. The entire system, 570 billion gallons at capacity. So all the Catskill water from the west side of the Hudson goes through two tunnels, the Catskill Aqueduct, the Delaware Aqueduct, ultimately ends up here at Kensico. I just want to quickly clarify one point. There are two aqueducts that connect at the Kensico Reservoir. One is the Catskill Aqueduct, which is everything we've been focused on so far. And then there's an adjacent aqueduct called the Delaware that's a little bit newer that basically does the same thing. Oh, and there's one more aqueduct, the Croton Aqueduct, that's even older and much, much smaller than the other two. Back to the video. It's tested. You can see the robotic buoys that we have. There is a very large dramatic dam at one end of it. So all of the water is actually taken from the Kensico. From there it goes to Yonkers, uh, just outside the Bronx line to Hillview Reservoir and to hurdle into the city right up to the tap. So it was every residence and every business in New York. Did I miss something? Where did you find this guy? Talk to me. <laughs> I follow that up. I, just keep treating, John. Let us keep treating and do it our job. You got that covered, man. You guys run this place. Yes, my name is Louis Ocuto, uh, Chief of Kensico Operations. And I'm uh, Matt Warren, Deputy Director of Operations for Water Operations South. What happens here? We have a, uh, a crew of about uh, 12 watershed maintainers overseeing water treatment. Um, the operators are treating with uh, chlorine for disinfection and the application of fluoride for New York City's water supply. New York City's famous for having pretty delicious, good tasting water. Why is the water in New York? so good. Well, we have uh, multiple programs that help protect the water supply, both from our physical security, from the police, our waterfowl programs that help keep uh, birds off the reservoirs. We start off the process with the chlorine and, fluorid and fluoridation, like Lou said, and then we send it over to the UV plant, and we hit it with a lot of ultraviolet light to take care of the crypto spiridium and the giardia. For facts and figures, 1,800 feet end to end, uh, from the top all the way down to the base, 307 feet, holding back 30 billion gallons of water. If this were to fail, and believe me, it's in great shape, there would be flooding events all the way down to the Long Island Sound. Thank you. Anytime, anything more you need filled in. We actually needed a lot more filled in. At this point, we had a good grasp on everything that happens outside of the city lines, but we needed to learn about how water is distributed throughout the city itself. So we set up a meeting with one of the most important people in the city, the commissioner of the DEP. I'm Rohit Agarwal. I'm the commissioner of the New York City Department of Environmental Protection. So we've got two balancing reservoirs in the system. One is the Hillview Reservoir that serves the Catskill and Delaware systems, and then we've got the Jerome Park Reservoir that serves the Croton system. The water goes from those two reservoirs into our three water tunnels very imaginatively named City Water Tunnel 1, City Water Tunnel 2, and City Water Tunnel 3. They are 700 feet down. And then throughout the city, we've got several dozen shafts that bring that water up from 700 feet below ground into the water mains that you know are right in the street under basically every road in New York City. The water mains are a little bit like an upside down tree, right? It's got the trunk, that's the city water tunnel. Then it'll go up to the larger mains. They get smaller and smaller like the branches of a tree, depending on the size of the population that's in that area. Most people think we have to provide artificial pressure 
but it's not true. Literally the entire system in New York City is driven by gravity. Our reservoirs are at an elevation. Even though we push that water down into the city tunnel, 700 feet below ground, still that backed up pressure from upstate is gonna push it up to surface level and up into the buildings. Now, above about six stories, you need some artificial pressure within the building. But at the water mains, you've got really nice pressure. And if you've ever seen, you know, over the summer, somebody opens one of our fire hydrants, they've got real pressure. And that is all coming down from the Catskill Mountains. Doug has a habit of setting me up for things to get my shoes all wet. <laughs> so this is one of our 900 drinking water sampling stations that are all over the city that connect directly into the water mains and make it possible so that our technicians can come and take a sample of the water. Uh, it's, it's, you know, like going to a, to a checkup at your doctor and getting some blood drawn. And we've got a bunch of robots. I hope you saw the robots up in the uh, reservoirs, right? Yeah, yeah. Okay, good. This one. Oh, all right. Really? Appreciate your interest in this topic. Of course. After making its way through the water mains, the last stop on water's journey is the connection point to your building. You think Larry's here? Larry's the, owner, the guy who owns the building. Are you here? Uh, no. Mm, okay. We just wanted to have, ask a question about the water. It's not a problem. We're just trying to understand how it works for a video. Okay, the water meaning what? The, the, the fresh water, like how the water, how the water gets in the building from the street. Uh, well, it's, it's, it's uh, New York City's finest water. <laughs> Contact Kenny. You have his number, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. We'll 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 find Kenny. Thank you. Okay. Hello. Kenny. There he is. What's up, my brother? Can you show us the water? Yeah. Where does the water come into the building from the from the street? There's that that long one going across. You see that one going across? Yeah. That's the main water line that the goes up. One. The black one. That black one goes up into uh, the building. It all starts from there. Back there. Back there. It's kind of nice in here. <laughs> you, could, you could keep your wine down here. <laughs> keep it in the cellar. <laughs> yeah. All right, well, thanks for showing us around. Is this where you hang out mostly, Kenny? Well, my office is over here. You guys want to look at it? Yeah. yeah. Yes. <laughs> Cuzzo's office. Oh. We'll get you. We'll get you. So now, after months of filming, we finally understand where this water comes from. This video took us so long to make because we kept peeling back layers, uncovering more and more history, and meeting more and more of the people who keep this system running. This system that provides the most important resource in our lives. Anyways, that's the story of water in New York City. Thank you for watching.